Hi all, my name is Adam Harhorowitz. I'm a PhD student in the Media Lab in the Fluid Interfaces group. And I'm really happy to be joined by Agnieszka Karant for CAST's three question series. And we're going to be speaking through a couple projects that Agnieszka did in her visiting artist residency and one that we did together. Agnieszka, do you want to start just by introducing yourself to people? Hello, everyone, and thank you so much to um, CAST for um, hosting this talk. Uh, my name is Agnieszka Kurant. I'm a visual artist, and I was a visiting artist at MIT CAST uh, from 2016 to 2018. Agnieszka, I, I know that in past works like Production Line or the end of the signature for you, um, automation, collective intelligence, and shared authorship have been big themes in your work. Um, and so I just thought we could start with how those were points of departure for your, your collaboration with Boris Katz and the info group at MIT. Um. I, uh, during my um, uh, residency at MIT, I was collaborating with the um, uh, uh, CSAIL um, and Artificial uh, Intelligence Lab of uh, Boris Katz. And um, uh, we were working together with uh, Boris's fantastic uh, PhD and uh, postdoc students, Andre Barbu and David Mayo, um, on um, uh, a project that um, stemmed from my earlier research and uh, projects that I've done uh, before. So I would uh, like to share with you a couple of images. Um, so I've been interested in, uh, in the phenomenon of collective intelligence that um, can be um, um, perceived in both nature and culture for a very long time. And uh, this, for example, is uh, one of my projects um, where uh, I outsource or crowdsource my um, artworks to um, um, colonies of living termites uh, and together with entomologists from um, uh, University of Florida we gave termite colonies very vividly colored sands gold and broken crystals and each colony built one of these mounds so um, this here, what you can see is a series of works uh, called The End of Signature, where I um, uh, collect signatures of thousands of people of various uh, communities, of social movements, of people supporting one cause, such as uh, against climate change and uh, different kind of activist groups, uh, but also uh, members of the um, workers' unions. And um, uh, in this series, I uh, work each time with uh, a computer scientist or, or a programmer to kind of morph, uh, aggregate together thousands of these signatures and create one single collective signature um, that represents a kind of collective personality of a given community. This is at the uh, facade of the Guggenheim Museum uh, where we co collected signatures of the visitors. This is on the facade of the Cleveland Museum of Art where these are all the workers, all the employees of, of this museum, plus contract workers from the members of the board to um, the guards and the cleaning ladies. Um, this is a collective signature of all the people living in this group of uh, uh, buildings in this, in the, in, in this um, council project. The, the, the themes with the end of signature and production line in terms of hybrid authorship and hybrid production and, uh, and, and materialization of a collective intelligence. Um, I think it's a good segue into the Animal Internet Project, if, if you could take people there, perhaps. Uh, yes, absolutely. Uh, this is the image from um, like a, a work in, in progress of the of the project uh, done at uh, Boris Katz lab with with uh, his uh, PhD and postdoc students. So um, with Boris, we collected thousands of uh, self portraits uh, taken by workers on um, Amazon Mechanical Turk, and we created a program that aggregated all these portraits, uh, one line of pixels from each photograph to collect to create this composite uh, collective uh, portrait of this new working class. Then we created the 3D sculptures that were 3D cut resin with uh, copper and nickel plated that were this kind of collective portraits of this working class. This was a point of departure for our project for Animal Internet. Animal Internet it was based on my interest in um, 
how uh, today social energies in society are being mined in a similar way to oil and gas, how expressions of our joy, anger, uh, frustration, enthusiasm, happiness are constantly being monitored by corporations and, and, and harvested. Uh, and uh, how can we ourselves take advantage of this, uh, of, of our uh, own social capital and maybe use it for other type of projects? So I looked at this phenomenon called animal internet that was described very interestingly in a book by Alexander Pschera about three years ago, a book of the same title. And he described this phenomenon where people start perceiving an, uh, nature and start being with nature in uh, various different ways. Um, for example, there are animals that have uh, chips under their skin and they are being tracked on animal tracker apps uh, around the world. There's about 150,000 of these animals. Um, and um, uh, at the same time, a lot of scientific institutes install webcams in jungles or in the North Pole um, to uh, watch completely wild and completely unaware animals. Uh, and this broad Podcasts are being transmitted online and people start following um, these animals. These animals are being given Facebook pages, fan pages, names. So they, they, there's this kind of hybrid uh, uh, situation of these animals being completely wild and unaware and meanwhile they become celebrities online and people follow that. So um, in our project with um, Adam and our other collaborators, we used broadcasts from two uh, webcams, two real webcams that you can see here. One is polar bear in the North Pole and one is a wild uh, tiger uh, in a uh, jungle in Thailand. And we juxtaposed these two broadcasts with two other broadcasts that we created from scratch with, with our group of artists and engineers. And so we basically created two uh, um, fictional um, animatronic um, animals. One is an animal in the um, upper left corner. You can see an image of kind of furry animal. Uh, just uh, wanted to, to say that we didn't, that all the fur used in this project was artificial. No animals were harmed. Uh, so we used uh, this artificial fur uh, to hide an um, animatronic mechanism and we uh, um, uh, included real plants and stones and uh, uh, fragments of wood in a, uh, in a, like a terrarium. The, the, this animal, this uh, artificial animal, was, uh, its movements were powered by uh, inputs from uh, thousands of people um, uh, who uh, uh, were uh, uh, sending us information on Amazon Mechanical Turk about how they feel at any given moment. Uh, these were aggregated and Adam will uh, tell a little bit more in a, in, in a couple of minutes about uh, the technical side of this project. Um, but just to mention the other bottom right uh, uh, corner um, camera, uh, this broadcast uh, the, the, uh, was from the webcam that uh, we also kind of built from scratch in another terrarium. And these are robotic animatronic gerbils. And this swarm of gerbils was kind of the, their movement were, was powered by, well, program that was parsing um, uh, Twitter feeds for, uh, of protest of members of protest movements around the world. And, and this was then analyzed in an artificial society model, which is uh, an animation model of a, of a, of a, of a artificial fictional society um, that um, our fantastic engineers wrote. And so basically these four cameras were juxtaposing real animals and uh, artificial animals into one um, broadcast where uh, for the people who watch this, these animals online, it doesn't really matter whether the real designate in nature of the real animals exist, because anyway, they only see their images. And I will maybe let Adam uh, say more about the technical side of this project. That was a content loaded and awesome summary. One piece that's that's fun for viewers is is how we created the project because you initially uh, uh, approached us to collaborate um, as part of the signature hack in hacking arts. So the the largest parts of this project was done in 24 hours, where you stayed up with us until 3 a.m. and where we created the robotic movements by stripping apart a bunch of robots and creating our own strange hybrid organism from multiple mechanical animals and then also where Agnes coded up a sugar skate model and then 
Ishan was scraping the emotion using natural language processing from Twitter to see the intensity of emotion related to tweets that had the, had the word protest in them. And that was then driving the gerbil movement and where then Owen was uh, connecting with Tim many different hex bugs so we could make gerbils which could communicate with each other using radio frequency. And the whole time, one thing that was really fun for me is the discussions that we were having were always tied back to, to neuroscience, tied back to the idea of how humans are a hybrid organism, both in terms of being cyborg hybrids and, and then also being hybrids in terms of our collective intelligence on the internet changing our own self-reflection. And so one really fun thing is the production happening in such a hurry. And the other, I think, is all of the resonance and themes between the neuroscientific aspect of it and the human computer interaction aspect of it. And that tying into the themes that you're speaking about in terms of hybrid and collective intelligence. And for me, also, the, the, the work has really continued. Um, we were speaking about this just a few days ago, but I'm starting a, a new project with um, support of CAST and Kemet at MIT, where again, working with deconstructing robotic animals and reconstructing them and then connecting them to humans so that they can materialize different sorts of changes in cognition. And right now, the project that I'm working on is a, a dream activated animals project where uh, we tie a sleep sensor to somebody, um, leave them in a room, but it's full of um, robotic animals that we've created. And when that person enters a dream state, when they experience this sea change in cognition, all those animals will wake up and start walking. So their life only comes at the onset of your unconsciousness. But it's really a tie between that idea of how is it that we materialize and mechanize and create these hybrid human robot organisms? And how is it that we can show this energy in active form and um, was a real continuation of this project. And so was just wondering also how maybe the sugar skate model that we built or, or, or maybe the actual um, collective mechanical hybrids, how any of those themes have continued in, in your work going forward, if any are, are, are still around. Uh, this is absolutely fascinating what you said, Adam, and I, I do believe that we will uh, continue working together very yeah. soon. And uh, so, yes, I mean, there is not enough time here to, to explain all the implications um, for this uh, project. Um, but, uh, uh, of course, this hybrid situations of like nature, culture, uh, uh, overlap, and basically the, also the idea of the, like, the collapse of the, of the concept of self. I mean, the, the self mm -hmm. as we knew it no longer exists because uh, it turns out that the self is, is a polyphony, is, a, is, a, is, a, is an aggregate of various kinds of agencies from microbial to algorithmic to, to, to a kind of collective intelligence as humans being part of society. So uh, all this has uh, continued to inform my my um, my practice, um, and um, uh, I want to just briefly show you two two works that I've recently uh, I love completed. This. <laughs> One of them is, I think, particularly interesting because of what has happened in the world since our project together, especially what's happened in the world the past couple of weeks. So this project is called Collective Rorschach Test. This is a lenticular print, so here you can see three different views of the same print. What it depicts, it's three uh, snapshots from, let's say, a life of, the, uh, of, of this collective organism um, that was created on the platform Reddit as part of the social experiment called PLACE, which took, took uh, place soon after our experiment with, with, uh, with Adam and, and, and uh, um, others. And so basically this experiment consisted in um, uh, over 1 million people who were whoever wanted to join the Reddit platform at this moment and this project they could put a single pixel in a chosen color on a white canvas so you can actually see the white in the background and people started collaborating and using, using various channels to, to co collaborate on various collectively built forms from portraits of politicians that you can see here from from flags and like the European Union flag Puerto Rican flag and so on, artworks, here we can see a very small fragment of the Mona Lisa, to, to various kind of slogans of protest movement and so on. And at some point, a very interesting form emerged. The, this form was later uh, named the Black Void, 
and uh, this is this this black kind of and this this form changed over time and you can see here how it's evolving and it looks like a slime mold or a virus or another kind of collective organism and of course today with what's happening in the world um, when we're looking at the pandemic and how people around the world are trying to define what this pandemic is, what this virus is, it itself becomes a kind of collective Rorschach test where everybody recognizes something else in it and it collectively, it constantly evolves. This is um, the second very big project that I've been recently developing and presenting and I will say only a few words very briefly. It, this series of works is called Conversions. And it's directly connected to the experiments that we have been doing with Adam and, and I continued working um, with Agnes Cameron uh, on this project. Uh, so this, these are paintings. They are liquid crystal paintings. So it's, uh, they are executed on a copper plate um, with uh, a paint that contains particles of liquid crystals. And um, uh, these paintings are AI paintings. They are powered by the changes uh, in the artificial society model. And these models, like in the experiments we did together, are based on constant uh, parsing of the protest movement's uh, Twitter feeds, members of the protest movement's Twitter feeds. And uh, it, these changes cause uh, um, differences in artificial society model. And uh, this, in turn, uh, causes uh, the delivery of various um, um, electrical charges and and temperature changes to the back of this painting. So this is how the painting changes over time. You can see how it's just a few minutes later and a few minutes later. And uh, so it oscillates between a map, a colony of bacteria, a ge geology, a, um, a slime mold, and it perpetually evolves. So these are uh, uh, paintings that like my earlier works uh, are collectively authored. So the authorship is obviously hybridized and complex, but also they are uh, in a way, mining social energies, and they always evolve. They are like living organisms. And last but not least, I wanted to mention something very important for both the works that we uh, did with uh, uh, Boris Katz and his students, and also for these works, and which remains a very important um, issue for me, is that um, the uh, proceeds um, uh, from uh, the sales of these works, if they ever get sold, uh, is always redistributed. In the case of the works that you're now looking at, the conversions, I give back a, a portion of the profits to the protest movements. Uh, in the case of the works that we did with uh, um, Boris Katz, this, uh, 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 the the proceeds from these works are redistributed evenly among uh, the workers of Amazon Mechanical Turk that participated in it. And so I'm interested in continuing the exploration of redistribution, how redistribution of capital can be um, uh, explored with artificial intelligence and how we can uh, today think about the crossover of collective intelligence and artificial intelligence in the arts. Cool. Um, I, I think that it's almost time for us to sign off, but I just wanted to say that I think the, the, the project and speaking with you, Agnieszka, for me was um, a, a real onset of, 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 of using hybrids outside to think about hybrids inside. I'm so excited about the idea that we are many more intelligences than we give us credit for ourselves. And we can think about that in terms of the gut brain, or we can think about that in terms of the intelligence in our left foot, or we can think about that in terms of biological neural networks, but this idea of your work showing these outside hybrids, taking us and putting us in touch with our, our hybrids inside, and also how that demands that we then think about collective authorship and redistribution of benefits from, from what it is that we make as hybrid organisms. Um, but I, I think it's time to sign off. I just want to give a big thank you to CAST um, and for, for this series, but also for the opportunity to collaborate with Agnieszka, which has been awesome um and we'll continue and that's about it um, thank you so much thank you th thank you i would like to give my special thank you to lila kinney who was the person who invited me first yeah. to uh, join uh cast uh thank you Catherine higgins thank you everyone thank you adam uh, it was a pleasure right on thanks y'all be well okay. Thank you all for joining us for this conversation with Agnieszka Krant and Adam Harkorowitz. Please join us next week for three questions with Karim Ben Khalifa and Danielle Olson and visit arts.mit.edu from anywhere for a wide range of arts activities, online exhibitions and performances, research and more. Have a great weekend, everyone. Bye. Have a great weekend. Bye. Adios, y'all.